We're going to talk about the principle of cooperation because your ability to get along with others will determine your success in life more than any other single factor. Some years ago, the Carnegie Institute of Technology analyzed 10,000 employees who were let go from their positions over a period of seven years. They found that 95% of the people who were let go from their companies were let go because of their inability to work well with others. 85% of all the problems you will ever have in life will involve other people. The very best way is to practice the golden rule, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Practice the law of sowing and reaping. If you want people to be cooperative with you, you must be cooperative with them. Treat everyone with courtesy, kindness, and patience. Remember, every person you meet is carrying a heavy load. If you practice self-discipline and have a clear sense of purpose, if you are good at what you do and accept complete responsibility for your actions, you strive to serve others with what they want and concentrate on your highest payoff activities, you will tend to be a positive, self-confident individual, and you will have no trouble getting along. Your power in business, industry, or politics will always be determined by who you can call upon for help and assistance. You build your power base by seeking out every opportunity to assist others with no immediate expectation of return. Of course, this strategy presupposes that you are excellent at what you do. You can only build power within an organization of value to the degree to which you are excellent at what you do. If you attempt to build a power base to compensate for a lack of excellence, what will happen is that it will just be perceived as cheap politics, and it will seldom work out. You will always do better with a plan than without, so prepare, prepare, prepare. The power is always on the side of the person with the most knowledge and the best notes and the most thorough preparation. In interacting with others, a key to cooperative relationships is to be a good listener. Here are some keys to effective listening. By the way, most people are very poor at listening, and if you become just a little bit better, you'll be amazed at the difference it will make in your interactions with others. Listen without thinking at the same time of what you're going to say. As soon as a speaker takes a breath, listen quietly, patiently, and calmly without interrupting or attempting to interrupt. If you allow three to five seconds to pass before you respond, you will be conveying to the other person very clearly that you are carefully considering the other person's remarks and you are avoiding the risk of interrupting. One other advantage to pausing is that psychologists tell us that you hear better when you pause before replying because the words that the other person has said soak in, if you like, and you get a better understanding of what the other individual actually means. Feed it back in your own words to make it clear to the other that you fully understand and you've been listening carefully. Remember, in conversation, the person who asks questions has control. All open-ended questions cannot be answered by yes or no. Examples are what, where, when, who, why, and how. These are all questions that encourage the person to expand on the subject. In building cooperative relationships, practice the law of indirect effort. The law of indirect effort says that in our relationships with others, we almost invariably get what we want more rapidly by indirect means rather than by direct means. There is nothing that will so impress another than for you to be impressed by them because then the other person will become very interested in who you are and will respect your judgment and your discernment. Another example of the law of indirect effort is if you want others to be interested in you, be interested in them. If you want others to like you, like them. If you want other people to respect you, then respect them. If you want others to believe in you, believe in them. If you want to have a friend, be a friend. The law of indirect effort is the key to effective relationships with other people. Now, here is an extension. Here are some of the keys to cooperative human relations, and they all start with acceptance. Acceptance means accepting the other person unconditionally for exactly who they are without judgment and without reservation. Acceptance or rejection is something that takes place with every interaction, and we are attuned from childhood to be very alert to whether or not we are accepted or rejected by others in social interaction. And the finest and simplest way to express acceptance is in a conversation is simply to smile. Whenever we smile at another person, it not only puts them at ease and raises their self-esteem, but when you smile, it releases endorphins in the brain and gives you a feeling of well-being and contentment. Another key to cooperation is appreciation. I think the two most beautiful words in any language are, thank you, please, and thank you, will get you just about anywhere you want to go. And one of the best things that you can do to build self-esteem in your children is to say thank you to them for everything they do for you. And one of the best things that you can do to build a happy home is to say thank you to your spouse for everything they do, 
small or large, around the house. Another key to cooperative human relations is approval and praise, which is to acknowledge and recognize when people do things, and when they do things well. Some of the keys to approval and giving approval are, first of all, be sincere. Never express approval unless you believe it, unless you actually genuinely feel that the individual has done something that is praiseworthy. Another key to approval is to be immediate. If somebody does something, give them the praise immediately afterwards. Praise delayed is usually praise that has no effect at all. If you would like to develop a habit in another person, praise continuously until the habit is developed. If you would like to maintain the habit, then praise intermittently afterwards. In other words, praise the person every second or third time they do it to maintain the habit in place. Another key to cooperative human relations is admiration. Abraham Lincoln said, everybody likes a compliment. And the two things that you can quite safely compliment people on are their traits or their possessions. People are very proud of their personal traits. Compliment people on their possessions. Praising a person's children, praising a person's house, or praising a person's clothes, furniture in their house or in their office, will always be greeted well by the other person. It raises the other person's self-esteem and makes them far more receptive to working cooperatively with you. And finally, agreeability. Be agreeable. Be an agreeable person. Be the sort of person that people like to have around because you are not argumentative or difficult. And even if you disagree, ask yourself always, how important is this? And if it's not important, let it pass. One of the characteristics of people that we always enjoy is that they smile. They say thank you. They praise and approve our behaviors and actions. They admire our possessions. And they're agreeable. And they're easy to get along with. Remember this, that in business and in industry and in all organizations in our society today, all work is done by teams. And your ability to work well on a team and your ability to build an effective team to get the job done is going to determine your success as much as any other single factor. So here are some keys to encourage teamwork. Number one, make sure everyone knows what you are trying to accomplish. Make it clear that everybody on the team knows what the goals or objectives of the team are. Make sure that everybody knows why you are trying to accomplish it, what is the reason, what is the purpose, who will be affected, and how much. People will go a long way to help you achieve the what if they know the why. Make sure everyone knows exactly what they are expected to contribute individually. Give ample praise and recognition for performance. The basic rule with regard to team building is to give lots of praise and recognition in public. Give criticism and constructive feedback in private. Personally accept 100% responsibility for anything that goes wrong. Take the blame and share the glory. Exceptional executives are always those who, if a person does not do the job, accept that it is their responsibility of having put the person in the job in the first place. Remember, people make mistakes, and it often happens that you will put a person in a job for which they are not suited. If that's the case, it is not the person's fault. It is the fault of the executive who put them in that position, and it is the responsibility of the executive to remove them. Never criticize, condemn, or complain. It lowers morale and robs people of self-esteem. Remember, everything that you do that makes other people feel good about themselves boosts your own self-esteem and makes you a more dynamic, successful person. The real key to cooperative human relations is to treat everyone as though they were the most important person in the world, a million-dollar customer. And, as I said earlier, your ability to get along with others, your ability to function well on teams, your ability to work well in meetings, and to cooperate effectively with other human beings more than anything else determine the height to which you will rise in your field or industry. Thank you. Here's the corrected version. Success factors include knowledge. In our society, those who are most knowledgeable about their field tend to earn the highest salaries. The rule of thumb is that to increase your income, you must expand your knowledge. Jim Rohn famously stated that while formal education may secure a living, personal education leads to wealth. Moreover, knowledge is becoming obsolete at a faster rate than ever before. Thus, continuous learning is crucial, as stagnant knowledge becomes less valuable over time. The second factor that enhances success is skill development. Knowledge, when properly learned and practiced, transforms into skills. Mental skills, such as decision-making and problem-solving, are crucial for achieving desired outcomes. Ultimately, the measure of success lies in the results we produce. The third success factor is developing an ever-widening circle of contacts. 
Major life changes are often accompanied by individuals who either open or close doors for us. The more people who know and support us, the greater our chances of achieving our goals. Financial stability is another critical factor. Having savings provides greater freedom and the ability to seize opportunities as they arise. Without financial security, individuals may feel trapped in unfulfilling jobs, hindering their potential for growth and success. Developing good work habits is the fifth success factor. Success in all areas of life requires adopting the habits of highly successful and hard-working individuals. Focus and concentration are essential for prioritizing tasks and achieving important goals. Honesty is the foundation of trust in all relationships. When others believe they can rely on us to keep our word and follow through on commitments, they are more likely to seek opportunities through us, thus facilitating our success. Creativity is key for innovation and problem solving. Successful individuals are always seeking better ways to do things, whether it's improving efficiency, quality, or customer satisfaction. Maintaining good health is essential for sustained energy and vitality, critical components of success in a competitive world. Finally, speed is crucial in today's fast-paced environment. Acting quickly on good ideas, seeking feedback, and learning from failures are essential for continual improvement and success. In summary, success requires continuous learning, skill development, effective networking, financial stability, good work habits, honesty, creativity, health consciousness, and agility. By focusing on these factors, individuals can maximize their potential for success in all aspects of life. Here's the corrected version. How can we help our customers and so on, so they're constantly looking for better ways? You know that 99% of business ideas don't work. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? Try this, try that, try this, try that. Nothing seems to work, and then you start to think, what's wrong with me? No, you just have to try a lot of things. If you do it right, you'll eventually find the way that works. But you have to have lots and lots of ideas. Number 9. Stay health oriented. Think about your health most of the time. Remember, to be successful in our competitive world, you need a lot of energy. To have a lot of energy, you've got to eat good foods, get lots of rest, and exercise all the time. And the last thing I wanted to leave you with was, we have a need for speed. You've got to move fast because there's no time at all for people who just coast. If you get a good idea, move quickly on it. You try something, get feedback, which makes you smarter. So, you keep failing and you keep failing in a forward direction. And even though it's at an unconscious level, you're getting better and better, and smarter and smarter, and quicker and quicker the more you fail. There's a scripture that when I first heard it and read it, I just said, Oh boy, that's cold-blooded. He that hath shall get, and he that hath not, even that that he has shall be taken away. People without vision perish. Ambition, stubbornness, perseverance, they have those qualities. You will get, you have those qualities. You restore everything you lost and more. God has not given us a spirit of fear but a power of a sound mind. This place where you are, where I am, this place, no guts, no glory. This place, they've not tested, can't be trusted. We need to saturate ourselves with words that will empower us how we live our lives. Our children are watching, it will be a warning or an example, a warning of what not to do. Therefore, taking you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. It's our time to be actively engaged in this thing called life. I'm looking for, and I'm on a mission for people who can hear me. You and I are cut from the same cloth, your branches of the same tree. If my message and my method and my approach resonates with you, you have a story in you. You like to help people. For millions of people who need to hear a multitude of voices, allow me to coach you to bring out the greatness in yourself and to bring out the greatness in others. It's 75. My goal is to find people who are hungry to make an impact with their lives, who are hungry to learn how to use and access their powerful voice, who are hungry to live a life that will outlive them. As you look at your goals, be stubborn about your goals. Be stubborn, don't give up on your goals. You will fail your way to success. A lot of people won't do that because a lot of people, as a result of pride, pride, pride cometh before fall. Get started, do what you can, what you have, and God will do what you can't. I'll give you all your eyes can see. And that experience that you provide for women with girl hold my hand expands their vision, activates the reticular activating system in their brain, and it peaks the level of awareness. And it's really a success mechanism that when you're focused, when you are focused, 
It allows you to see things that the masses can't see because they're caught up in the distractions. That's why they call this the attention economy. And that's why alcoholism has increased in the United States and around the world. And the suicide rate has increased because people are focused more on their problems rather than on solutions. On what is it I need to do? Who is it I need to be? I think that the more communities that are created around values, around things that you believe in, around dreams, around content that can give you methods and techniques and how to create the next greatest version of yourself, around the relationships that you can build, collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships that will allow you to begin to put your success on steroids. The more events that we have of that nature, we can begin to become the dominant culture rather than the smaller culture. In a year, your goal is to multiply the voices, multiply the level of consciousness, and help people to know and to believe and discover the truth about themselves. When they think about your background and the experience that you came from, you decided that where you were was not going to be your destiny. When you looked at yourself one day, a moment, and you said to that person that was looking back at you, this is not me. I've got to do something differently. Let's talk about that moment. You know, to be honest with you, like, I've had several of those moments. There's some of you who want to do what I do, want to speak. And let me share something. If there's something you want to do, take action. Do it now. P. E, this thing called life. We don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. If there's something in your heart that you want to do, listen to me, do it now. And I want you to write this down. Resilient, purpose-driven mindset. You want to have a resilient, purpose-driven mindset that will focus your mind on the goals that you want to achieve, on the things that you need to do to reinvent yourself, to rethink your life, to see whether or not you're on the path to becoming the next greatest version of yourself. So, in order to develop that resilient, purpose-driven mindset, you want to listen to the messages over and over, take notes on things that jump out for you, and become the embodiment of it. And develop that kind of mindset in how you carry yourself, and how you face this thing called life. No big deal, then, but when life knocks on the door, when you go through some stuff, when you get a bad diagnosis, that's when you have to pull on your faith. That's when you have to be resilient. Now, here's the other thing that's very important. As you look at yourself, you want to master at least three things. Three things. Multiple streams of income. Three things. I speak, I train sneakers, and I'm an author. And I got other things, I'm expanding it. It takes longer to wear out than to rust out. So, the goal is to be actively engaged in life, raising the bar on yourself. Turn down the amount of time that you spend entertaining yourself watching television, and do things that will stimulate your thinking. It will keep you young. And so, I decided, just because I'm 75, you're not going to count me out. I'm still here. I'm going to be engaged in this thing called life, because I have not done my best work yet. Every day is the best day of your life. Dot. Look for ways in which you can begin to master something. Learn something today that you did not know yesterday. Expand your horizon. Expand your vision of what's possible for you. My high school theme was, you never find out how much you know until you find out how little you know. They're going from mindset mastery, learning three things that they can master to create, create non-performance income. There's no excuse today for not being in the mindset of achieving something beyond that which you have already done. Life is an adventure, and this is an exciting time that you can earn money at the comfort of your home. Take advantage of this. This is something you want to learn. Mindset mastery and skill set mastery of the internet. You have to, as you look at yourself, look at your goals, look at your dreams. Not only is it resilient, purpose-driven mindset is important. What do you think about your life right now? I looked at my life, and I just said, you know what? I want to do more. I want more. I want more for myself, my family, my mother. And I want to be in charge of my own destiny. If you can understand how I felt when I was doing something that wasn't me, and I was doing something to survive, what it takes to live versus what it takes to survive are two different things. And so here's what I realized. That if you're not willing to take a chance on you, if you're not willing to learn something and reach beyond your confidence zone so that you can explore some other possibilities for yourself, you never discover the greatness that you have within yourself to do more, to have more, and to experience more. You know what I'm doing? I'm speaking to corporations. I'm speaking to organizations. I'm speaking to different groups of people who want to be motivated and inspired, then helping them to create a sense of engagement and unification, even though they're separate geographically. I teach people how to use this computer to bring their personality through, their passion, and their energy through to create a significant emotional event.
see, the reason I have the advantage of doing this than the average person, because I was in radio for many years. I couldn't see the people that I was talking to. And you do it after a certain period of time. You develop some skills intuitively, that you know when you're connecting with people. I'm successful at this, and one of the top impactful speakers doing this because of my background. Do something beyond your comfort zone. Learn something new so you can see what's in you. You've got some more stuff back there, but you'll never find out what it is if you don't test yourself. And I was going, seeing these people speaking everywhere, and I said, I'm going to put myself to the test now. Write this down. The people that are going to make it now, the people that are going to take advantage of this breakthrough. Listen, we work hard for where we are right now. Don't sleep this period now. Good times, they have an expiration date. So you want to maximize this time. You want to milk this moment. You want to make your move right now. And one of the things that I do and I encourage my kids to do. When I make some money, I operate like I don't have a dime. Like I don't have a dime. I start working harder. And this is what you have to do. The people that are going to be successful are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. What is it that most people won't do? Learn something new. They're comfortable with what they're doing now. So, learn something new. If you're not willing to learn anything new, no one can help you. But if you're willing to learn something new, like I decided to do this, no one can stop you. I'm not saying this to you to impress you, but to impress upon you that you got it like that too. You need to learn how to work for yourself from home, virtually, and control your own destiny. Be your own boss. Here's something else. I discourage you. Don't do this if you're not hungry. If you're going to make it today, you've got to be hungry. The 47 million people are going to lose their jobs. Some artificial intelligence. Millions of people have lost their jobs because of coronavirus. You think you're the only one out here? The people, they're people that are desperate going through foreclosures and evictions, lost their jobs, lost their businesses. So, the people that are going to come out on top, the people that will snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, they're hungry. You've got to get your hustle on. People that are hungry are the first ones there and the last ones to leave. That's why I did it. I wanted to make myself more valuable and increase my value for the operation. Dot. You have to have that kind of attitude about life. You've got to be hungry. You have to get your stuff together. Average is over. Being average. Doing just enough to get by? No. When I talk to people, I can ask a certain question. I can tell the hungry ones and the ones who are slackers. And they're everywhere. The pigeons, see? Today, employers are looking for eagles. You go outside right now and see some pigeons. But it's going to take a minute to see some eagles because they fly high. This time requires that you invest in you. That's what I was willing to do. The people that will be successful are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. People who are not successful have large television screens. And people who are successful have large libraries. Hello? Hum. People who are hungry are willing to discipline themselves. They're willing to dedicate themselves to learn something different. See, anything can be mastered if you're willing to put in the time and put in the effort and focus yourself on learning how to do that. To make yourself stand out in the attention economy is the attention economy. You've got to make yourself stand out. You've got to operate out of thinking of Henry David Thoreau. Do not go where the path may lead. Go where there's no path and leave a trail. Leadership and self-discipline go hand in hand. It is not possible to imagine an effective leader who lacks self-discipline, willpower, self-control, and self-mastery. The overarching characteristic of a leader is that they are in complete control of themselves in every situation. There has seldom been a time in history when leaders were so needed and so much in demand as today. We need leaders at every level of society, both in the profit and non-profit sectors. We need leaders in our families, businesses, places of worship, community organizations, and especially in politics. We need men and women who take their responsibility seriously and are willing to step forward to take command of the situation. Fortunately, leadership is learnable. Leaders are usually developed, often self-developed, over time through hard work, experience, and training. As Peter Drucker once said, there may be natural born leaders, but there are so few of them that they make no difference in the great scheme of things. There are four stages of development in your career in business. You progress through four levels of activity and engagement. First, you start off as an employee with limited knowledge and experience. Then, as you grow, learn, and develop the ability to get results, 
You evolve upward and become a supervisor with responsibility for the performance and results of other people. As you continue to move up the scale of supervision, improving your ability to get things done through others, from directly overseeing the work of employees, you become a manager, someone who assigns work to people with demonstrated competence in certain areas. Managers have a larger view, and this comes with greater responsibilities. As you move up the scale of management, becoming more knowledgeable and effective in getting more and better results for more and different people, you reach the highest level, that of a leader. At this stage, you are responsible for determining what is to be done rather than how it is to be done. Some leaders are made, some are born, and some people have leadership thrust upon them. Leaders emerge or are promoted to deal with a situation requiring leadership ability. In its simplest terms, the role of the leader is to take responsibility for results. The primary reason that people are promoted into increasingly higher levels of leadership is that they demonstrate the ability to get the required results at each level. The ongoing question of a leader is always, what results are expected of me? Clarity is essential. The main reason that some people are not promoted into greater leadership positions, or perhaps they're even fired, is because of failure to execute. They do not do the most important jobs expected of them, nor do they get the results demanded of them. Leaders have vision. The first quality of leadership, based on 3,300 studies of leaders reviewed by James McPherson, is the quality of vision. Leaders have the ability to project forward into the future and develop a clear picture of where they want their organizations to go. They then have the ability to share this vision with others and gain others' commitment to make this vision a reality. You become a leader when you accept responsibility for results. You become a leader when you begin to think, act, and talk like a leader. You become a leader when you develop a vision for yourself and for your company, your life, or your area of responsibility. There are hundreds of books written about leadership and the importance of vision, yet they can be boiled down to a single principle. A military leader has a vision of victory from which he never deviates. A business leader has a vision of success for the business based on excellent performance to which he or she is completely committed. The leader is a standard bearer. The leader sets the standard for the organization or the department. It is not possible for anyone in the organization to have a clear vision or to aspire to a higher standard of excellence than the leader. For this reason, the leader is the role model, the one who sets the tone and the morale for everyone in the organization. The personality and influence of the leader affect everyone below him in the company, organization, or department. You cannot raise morale in a business. It filters down from the top, from the leader. The behavior of the leader influences and affects the behavior of everyone else. If the leader is positive, confident, and upbeat, everyone in the organization will be influenced by his behavior and will be more confident, positive, and upbeat as well. When you become a leader, you must discipline yourself to be a leader. You must walk, talk, and act the part of a leader. You become a different person with different responsibilities than a manager when you are working your way up. When you are part of the staff or the sales team, your focus is primarily upward and sideways. However, when you become a manager, you are part of management. This shift means that as a staff member, your orientation is directed upwards and sideways. But as a leader, your orientation shifts downward toward all the people for whom you are responsible. Perhaps the most important behavior of a leader is to discipline oneself to be a role model. Imagine that everyone is watching you and emulating everything they do and say based on your behavior. When you become a leader, you no longer have the luxury to let it all hang out. From the moment you are promoted into leadership, you have a special responsibility to discipline and control your words and behaviors in a manner that brings about the very best possible results for your organization and for other people. Set the standards. The leader sets the standards for the organization's behavior, quality of work, personal organization, time management, and appearance. In excellent organizations, the leader is the person whom everyone looks up to and wants to emulate. In most cases, the leader works harder than others in the company and appears to be more committed, determined, courageous, visionary, and persistent than anyone else. The leader sets a tone that everyone wants to emulate. Additionally, the leader sets the standard for how people are treated in the organization. When a leader greets people with courtesy, consideration, and concern, it quickly becomes known that these are the standards to which others must adhere. Set values and principles. In addition to a clear vision for the organization, the leader must have a set of values and organizing principles that guide behavior and decision-making. 
Everyone must know what the leader and the company stand for and believe in. The job of the leader is to articulate this vision of excellent performance within the constraints of high ethical standards at all times. He or she must walk the talk and live the values and behaviors he or she teaches. The very best standard for a leader is the golden rule. Treat others as you would have them do unto you. For example, when Jack Welch was the president of General Electric, he encouraged managers to treat each employee as if that employee might be promoted over his head sometime in the future, and he might find himself working under the person who is now working below him. This way of thinking ensured that managers treated their staff with a high degree of respect and courtesy. Seven Principles of Leadership To be an effective leader, there are seven principles you must incorporate into your leadership behavior and activities. Clarity This is perhaps your most important responsibility. You must be absolutely clear about who you are and what you stand for. You must be absolutely clear about your vision and where you want to lead your people. You must be absolutely clear about the goals and objectives of the organization and how they are to be achieved. Especially, you must be absolutely clear about the values, mission, and purpose of the organization and what it stands for. Everyone around you and below you must know exactly why they are doing what they do and what their company has been formed to accomplish. Competence. As the leader, you must set a standard of excellent performance for the organization as well as for every person and function in the company. Your goal must be for your company to be as good or better than your very best competitor. You must be continually seeking ways to improve the quality of your products and services to your customers. Commitment. The leader is absolutely committed to the success of the organization and believes completely that this organization is the best in the business or will be the best in the future. This passion, commitment to the organization, and to success and achievement motivates and inspires people to do their best work and put their whole hearts into their jobs. Constraints. The job of the leader is to identify the constraints or limiting factors that set the speed at which the company achieves its most important goals of revenue and profitability. The leader then allocates people and resources to alleviate those constraints and remove the obstacles so it can perform as one of the best in the business. Creativity. The leader is open to new ideas of all kinds and from all sources. The leader continually encourages people to find faster, better, cheaper, and easier ways to produce excellent products and services and to take better care of customers. Continuous learning. The leader is personally committed to reading, listening, and upgrading his or her personal knowledge and skills. As an executive, the leader should attend additional seminars and courses to improve his or her skills and abilities. At the same time, the leader encourages everyone in the organization to learn and grow as a normal and natural part of business life. The leader provides time and resources for training and development, knowing that the best companies have the best trained people. Consistency. The leader has the self-discipline to be consistent, dependable, reliable, calm, and predictable in all situations. One of the great comforts of business life is for an employee to know that the leader is completely consistent and reliable. An effective leader does not change from day to day. The leader is not blown in the wind by each new situation, problem, or emergency that arises. Instead, the leader is calm, positive, and confident, especially under pressure. The only thing that is inevitable in the life of the leader is the crisis when you rise to a position of leadership. You will experience crises repeatedly. Crises that are unpredictable, unbidden, and often capable of seriously damaging the organization. It is in the crisis that the leader demonstrates their competence. In times of crisis, the leader becomes calm, cool, objective, and completely in control. The leader asks questions, gathers information, assesses the situation accurately, and makes whatever decisions are necessary to minimize the damage or cut the losses. Great leaders discipline themselves to keep their fears and misgivings private. They do not share their concerns with their staffs, knowing that this can cause confusion and loss of morale. Instead, the leader asks a lot of questions, probes deeply into a situation so that he or she understands it thoroughly, and keeps his or her feelings private. As far as the members of the organization are concerned, the leader is always calm, positive, relaxed, and in complete control, no matter what is happening. Self-control and leadership. There's a direct relationship between your ability to discipline yourself and your readiness to lead. It is only when you prove to others that you are in complete control of yourself that they develop the confidence to put you in a leadership position and keep you there. 
The leader realizes that everything he says to or about another person is magnified. The leader, therefore, praises and encourages people both in their presence and when they are not around. He never says anything negative that could be misinterpreted or could demotivate or offend another person. If he has problems with someone, he addresses them privately, out of sight and earshot of anyone else. Leadership Qualities Leaders discipline themselves to plan, prepare, organize, and check every detail. They take nothing for granted and ask questions to ensure that they have a complete understanding of a situation, problem, or difficulty. Great leaders act as if they own the entire company and accept a high level of personal responsibility. The leader never complains, makes excuses, or blames others for problems. Leaders are intensely action-oriented. They gather information carefully and make the decisions that are necessary. They set measures and standards and hold others to them. They insist that the job be done quickly and well. Leaders rise to the top of an organization as cream rises in milk. When you have complete responsibility for getting results, concentrate single-mindedly on completing your most important tasks. Continually upgrade your knowledge and skills as well as your ability to contribute value to your company. Treat others with kindness and consideration. You naturally emerge as a leader as you demonstrate your ability to make an increasingly valuable contribution to your organization. People above, below, and on both sides of you will want you to be promoted into leadership and will support you when you reach that position. One of your primary goals in life is to walk, talk, act, and treat others as a leader would. Eventually, your position will be equal to your performance.